For a short time in the 1980s and 1990s, Dan Post had some of their boots made in Spain. The quality during this time rivaled that of the boots they made in the USA when they first started in the 60s. I found a pair of these special Dan Post boots on shopgoodwill.com and I won them with a bid of $10. Today I'm going to break down the details of these boots and explain why I've been on the lookout for a made in Spain Dan Post for a while now. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, please subscribe if you like cowboy boot, western wear, and folk music content. I found a pair of Made in Spain Dan posts a few years ago, and I really liked the quality and the look of them, but unfortunately they weren't my size. So ever since then, I've been on the lookout for a pair on the secondhand market. And luckily, I found a pair on shopgoodwill.com and won them with a bid of $10 and paid a total of $28.43 with shipping and handling. When these boots arrived, they weren't in as good a shape as I hoped they would be, but it's always tough to tell the condition of boots on shopgoodwill.com since their pictures are always the worst pictures that you would find. Still, it was worth a shot and they are okay. You know, there are some cracks in the leather here and the sole has begun to separate on both boots. And this happens a lot when boots with leather soles get wet frequently and aren't given enough time to dry completely before wearing again. This would happen quite a bit with my go-to pair of boots, these ones right here, when they were my everyday boots and I would wear them rain or shine. Common problem that I would have and I ended up resoling these ones about six times so far and they're due for a seventh. The good news is these Dan Posts have the original outsole and heel cap. You can tell because the heel cap has its original brand and that the outsole doesn't have any evidence of being resold like a half sole and there's also lemon wood pegs alongside the shank here. So most likely this is the original outsole because there isn't any half soles and when you go to a cobbler, they don't have branded heel caps. They just use what they have. So original outsole means that there's a lot more wear to be had in these boots once I get them resold. I didn't do too much work cleaning these up since I have to take them in to get a resole. Anyways, I cleaned them up with saddle soap and noticed some dye coming off. And I bet these were dyed burgundy by their previous owner. Then I used some Sophia Renovator mink oil based conditioner, buffed it out, called it a day, and the leather feels so much better with just a little bit of love. Now let's take a closer look at this Made in Spain Dan Post with The Rundown. All right, this is Dan Post, model number 6676, and it features full grain leather on the foot counter and the tops, and it's really soft. The color here is burgundy, but it's definitely dyed after market. A look on the inside shows that the pull tabs are tan and the boots were most likely that color originally. This Dan Post also features a medium round toe, also known as an R toe. And you can see that the stitching on the welt is also dyed burgundy, which gives us a good hint that these were dyed after market by its previous owner. For a heel, we have a inch and a half leather stack heel. It looks great. This is the quality that you love to see in some of these old vintage boots. It comes in at 13 inches tall and features some top stitching, but also some cording with some buck stitching as well. I really like this look and the cording has been around for a really long time, guys. I know it's really popular right now with Tacovas and a bunch of other competitors that they have. It seems like every brand coming up right now is using the cording. It's been around for a while. And this is a good look on this Made in Spain Dan Post, especially with the buck stitch in the middle. For an outsole, we have a leather outsole and you can see the lemon wood pegs alongside the shank here. It's all lemon wood pegs. There are no brass nails, which is a superior quality to having any brass nails in there at all. You gotta love to see it and you also have a rubber heel cap. And like I said, this is the original outsole and heel cap here. So there's lots more wear to be had with a boot like this. So if you're looking on the secondhand marketplace, make sure that you are looking for boots that have an original outsole and heel cap just so that you can get as much life out of them as possible. On the inside, it's lined with cowhide leather and it's really soft. 
And for an insole, we have a traditional hard leather insole, so it's just a piece of hard leather in there. And when you buy boots secondhand, it might have the impression of the previous owner's foot in there, but just know that it will reshape with time to your foot. So a traditionally made boot is the best boot to buy on the secondhand marketplace. Like I mentioned, these Dan Post boots were made in Spain between the 80s and the 90s. They're no longer making them in Spain, so if you are on the lookout for a made in Spain Dan Post, you'll have to keep your search to the secondhand marketplace. Now let's try on these boots to see how they look and feel. All right, I got those Dan Post 6676 made in Spain boots on right now, and they feel incredible, man. That vintage Dan Post feel is awesome, guys. I love it. I was able to find a 12B, which is my true size. I'm a B width, which is a narrow width. A lot of the companies now just do Ds and double Es. I mean, if you're a regular here, you hear me talk about width size all the time because it's so, so, so important. And back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, and even before that, it was the golden age of cowboy boots, guys. So a lot of companies, all of them pretty much, released pretty much every width that you can imagine. So they had D widths, they had C widths, they had B widths and A widths, they had double A widths, like you name it. You had to release the correct width for people or else nobody was gonna buy your boots. Now the industry has changed, unfortunately, so that there's only Ds and double Es. So this goes back to a day when companies did cowboy boots right, even with the quality. I'm gonna pull over the, those jeans so you can see what they would look like, just rocking them normal. That leather feels really nice and I love the placement of that toe bug, that bug and wrinkle there. It's good placement, reminds me of where Lucchese used to put their bug and wrinkle and it allows the boot to bend in a very comfortable area and look nice as it breaks in. So it still looks good right now after being 30 years old. And a good reason of why that's happening is because that toe bug is there helping that boot bend in the right area. I have a video about that above if you'd like to see. Here's the POV. You can see that classic medium round toe and the dyed stitching from these being dyed aftermarket. It's Okay, you know, I would have liked these to be the original color, but I'm not gonna complain too much since these are kinda hard to find nowadays anyways. Made in Spain Dan Posts are few and far between. The whole boot is just incredible and I wish Dan Post still made boots like this today. I also kinda wish that this was in slightly better condition, like the leather wasn't cracked, there wasn't as many gouges on the toes, and that it wasn't dyed aftermarket like i would have loved to have this boot be its original color of tan but it's tough to complain very much right i mean this is a boot that has been discontinued for almost 30 years now so i mean the fact that i found one at all is just kind of lucky and the fact that i also paid less than 30 dollars total for it is also a win in my book it's going to need some work it's going to need a new outsole i think i'll probably use them as maybe a, a slight beater. So I'll probably get a half sole with a rubber sole here so that I can wear it a little bit more in wet weather, which seemed to be the case anyways with how this outsole is coming off. So it already has experience in those conditions. So I'm just gonna keep wearing it in those conditions. And I'm very happy that I found this boot. What do you guys think of Made in Spain Dan Post boots? Let me know down in the comments. I so, so wish that they made boots like this still. Dan Post has gone downhill since the 2000s and I've been kind of upset and disappointed in the quality that they have now. But this harkens back to a day when they had the quality down and I love to see it and I'm happy to have this boot in my collection now. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Dan Post's made in Spain Constructed back in the good old days How I wish they were made the same today Those Dan Post's made in Spain Thank you so much for watching today. I want you to learn more about buying used boots online up here at this video. Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe up here and I will see you next time. Peace.
Have a good one.